from Safaricom Limited, please welcome George Jaguna. Good morning. I think 11 years ago when I left the United States and moved back to Kenya to be part of the financial services and technology revolution, I never thought I'd be back here in the mecca of technology uh, speaking to such a warm audience. So I'd like to thank Bill and the organizers uh, for having me here. Even if it took 21 hours of flying time and I came yesterday, I am glad to be here and really would like to welcome uh, the audience that's also joining online, uh, even those who are joining from Africa. So today I'll just talk a bit about a few stories. I'd say just about right now, in very many uh, villages and towns, remote areas in Kenya, people may not have electricity, may not have running water, as they do in most of the developed nations, but they're actually able to receive money, to send money, to borrow money, and even sometimes to lend money to others using their mobile phone. So I'll be talking a bit about the mobile revolution in East Africa that's really been powered by the organization I work for, Safaricom, and hopefully at the end of it, look at the opportunities for partnership with the OCP community to continue our journey of transforming lives. So I'll talk a bit about the organization I work for. It's a young company. Uh, Safaricom PLC that started in the year 2000 and really our passion has always been about transforming lives. Now we delight over 40 million customers in a country that has a population of 52 million. Uh, we actually uh, have become I believe the best in mobile money as we have 30 million active customers who transact per day on our platform. A total of 52 million transactions that totals to $20 billion a month that goes through our platform. Our focus really has always been about putting the customer first. We talk about being simple, about being transparent, and about being honest. And this is the ethos that really guides everything that we do. So, so far we've uh, been successful, I'd say. We've built an $11 billion company. We have 6,000 people that talked about serving 38 million customers, and we contribute 6.5% uh, uh, to our GDP. We deliver solutions in a number of areas, communications, financial services, healthcare, agriculture, uh, and many others. But really, what really inspires us, what really drives us, is really looking at innovation and the use of technology in transforming lives. We don't believe that Africa is a dark continent. We believe that as much as Africa has challenges, Really, the challenges provide opportunities to transform lives. And through mobile technology, we've been able to actually leapfrog, where places uh, some people have never been able to walk into a bank. They've never been able to see what a branch looks like. They may not know what a credit card or a checkbook looks like, but they're able to transact effortlessly, seamlessly through our platform. We're passionate about uh, sustainability. And really, I kind of work around the spectrum of seven to 10 here, uh, looking at affordable and clean energy, and that's where the partnership with OCP is extremely critical. Decent work and economic growth, really what we've been able to do through our platform is people who would otherwise not have any means of having a bank account or being able to borrow money or able to do it and therefore earn a living for their family and support their community. I think we drive innovation and push innovation. We have about 95% of our country that's been covered uh, by 4G, and we've already began experiments and rollout of 4G in four major cities uh, in our country. But really reducing inequalities, I think, is really what touches me a lot. Because so many people in, in different ways, they're not really looking for a handout. They're just looking for an opportunity. And if we can come together, uh, the community and Safaricom, and see how we bring our insights on technology, on mobile technology, on mobile money, and power it up uh, with the power of the compute and hardware and everything that the OCP community brings to the table. How much more can we be able to reduce inequalities and also ensure that there's responsible uh, production and consumption? So last year, our CEO uh, rolled out 
uh, a new vision for the company. So we've been a telco with a fintech financial services arm. And we said our purpose still remains to transform lives, but we want to be a purpose-led technology company. And surely playing in the realm of technology is not the same as playing in the realm of telco. It means completely thinking about your, rethinking about your technology stack. It means rethinking about your proposition, your go-to-market. It's really redesigning a lot of what you became successful for and realizing that that's not necessarily what's going to make you successful as you go forward. But still, we talk about being digital first. We talk about being insights-led. And really at the core of it, uh, where I work in networks and IT and data and analytics, it's really ensuring that all these pillars are delivered. I think one of the things that we've been able to do well is really to connect people, connect businesses, and to connect people to opportunities. So overall in our country, we got about 54 to 60 million active subscribers. Uh, we have about 70% 70, 70 market share in that. Uh, we have an 87% uh, internet penetration. And as I mentioned earlier, 30 million active mobile money subscribers. Uh, the money that's uh, transacted in and out uh, in terms of the agents, and I'll talk a bit about that, in, is about 5 billion, but overall 20 billion on the platform a month. The agents is an interesting part of our ecosystem. Uh, I was Googling and looking at the United States. I started my career as a banker in Pittsburgh. But overall, the branches in the United States are about 78,000, give or take. But we've been able to get 245,000 agents. And what's an agent? An agent's a, an individual who many times can operate in a little space as three feet by three feet and maybe six feet high. And you just walk up to an agent with your mobile phone. In telco, you would call it a terminal. And you give them your phone number. And you give them money, and they can take it. And they give you mobile float, and it pops on your phone. The agents can receive money from you, but also you can do a cash out. So pretty much, I can say in many ways, the agents are teller. But we've been able to also give them a lot of other things that they can do. They're able to sign up new subscribers. We recognize that the trust the agent has in their community is a lot more than the trust people may have in large corporations. And so around Kenya, when you see a little green metallic structure, the first thing that comes to your mind is M-Pesa. So through that channel, that's the 5.8 billion that's transacted in and out. Many times, uh, people have been afraid of uh, digital disruption. But I always say it is an opportunity uh, to actually leapfrog and create new things and do things that have never been done before. And PESA is, has been an interesting story. So for about 14 years, uh, this platform has really changed how people look at mobile money and the possibilities. It really started as a simple money transfer that was solving a problem of people moving money and having to take money from the city uh, to the rural area, sometimes not being able to travel with the money because of the cost of travel or an urgency that's required in the middle of the week. So people would typically put money in a bus. And the bus, uh, they trusted the bus company to take money to a rural area, sometimes uh, even 500 miles away. The money would be received as cash. And the family of the person working in the city would be able to use it, take their kids to school, or various other things. Through time, we brought payment for services, paying for goods, electricity, water. Uh, I actually haven't been in a bank branch maybe for the last three or four years. And I'm able to transact everything, including paying for my children, paying for flights, using a mobile phone. International money transfer, it's the largest channel through which Kenyans uh, bring money into the country. 2012 was quite interesting. We partnered with a bank that I worked for at the time. And we were able to empower Kenyans to open a savings account and also be able to borrow. And all of a sudden, that bank, and I worked for it with 60,000 customers, uh, grew to over 20 million customers. Full payments of goods and services is available. In 2015, we brought the M-Pesa servers home from Germany. Uh, M -Pesa originally large partnership between Safaricom and Vodafone Group. So we brought the servers home in 2015. A lot of value addition happened 2016, 2017, card solutions, M-Pesa Global. And 2019 was an interesting one uh, with M-Pesa Fuliza. Uh, Fuliza is a word in Swahili that means to continue. Now, 
we noticed by studying data that 56% of the transactions that would fail on our platform would actually be completed the day after. And so it wasn't an issue that people didn't have the money. They just didn't have the money in their mobile wallet at that time. So we developed a digital overdraft solution. And this is really part of also having dignity for our people, that when you're at a till in a supermarket and you're about to pay, and remember this is a country where credit cards are not widely used, and you're just short of the money a bit, we're able to immediately score you and offer you an opportunity to complete that transaction with an overdraft. I always say that over 200 years ago, the first overdraft was completed in Scotland, but the first digital overdraft was done in Nairobi, Kenya in 2019. Through this platform, we lend about $15 million a day. And for the bank, people who are in banking, the non-performing uh, rate of these loans is less than 1%. It's about restoring dignity for our people and being able to transform lives. We realize how impactful this has been in Kenya, and we've expanded now into Africa through M-Pesa Africa. And you see the numbers there. Kenya is still the largest, but really doing well in Tanzania and Mozambique, scaling in Ghana, 90% market share in Lesotho, and really being the leading uh, local payment method in our continent really comes with a big responsibility to ensure that we're still continuing to address the needs that people have, not just to transfer money, but lots of other things that they may want to do. People want also, uh, through 25,000 uh, partners that we have, have built their businesses around this platform. I, t I joke with people that I have an availability target of five nines. And each time this platform, even if it has a hitch for 10 minutes, it's trending on Twitter and sometimes somebody's asking for me to be fired. But we still, <laughs> but you are tech people and you understand what that means. A few weeks ago when one of the big tech companies had an incident, I, we, our CEO asked, what, what's going on? Is it us or is what's going on? He said, this is a global crisis. It happens, but it's all part of uh, <laughs> making it clear that sometimes things go wrong. But really the pressure is upon us to ensure that we're not actually not just only failing people, but really our economy largely uh, def depends on this platform. So it's not just used uh, to pay, it's also used to borrow, to save, and so much more that we want to do. So what does this mean for a CIO? I think if we look at the transformation the company is going through, you look at the mobile money platform that really runs our country in so many ways, scalability and stability are extremely important. And that's one area that we intend uh, through the project we're running now with OCP to really leverage. There's increased complexity we see in our environment and limited automation. We really need to open this up and we're looking at robotics and how we can really decouple and break this infrastructure from a monolith to a microservices cloud native infrastructure to ensure that even if I have a fault on one side, I'm able to continue operating, to ensure that we can do things like canary deployments and being able to deploy in one part of the country and see how the solution works and then roll it out to the rest. Agility and security become extremely important. Uh, digital trust, especially as we deal with mobile money, is really uh, extremely important to our success. There are a lot of barriers we continue to face in adoption of the next generation of technology. I remember when I first started talking about OCP uh, last year and saying this actually two years ago, that this is something we need to look at and we need to do. A lot of people had never heard about OCP, so I started educating them how this aligns with our sustainability goals, how it will help us reduce on our capex, our opex, how it's going to help us be more energy efficient. I was calculating, uh, we, we spend about uh, a, a huge amount of money, $10 million a month on diesel. How can we bring that down by getting more energy efficient solutions in our data centers? And then there's resource optimization and cost allocation. Our customers are still saying, we love your services, we love the connectivity that we're able to get almost in any part of the country, but how can you make this cheaper for us? And for me, I look at it as a way that, how are we able to actually put more money back in the hands of our consumers so that they can be innovative, so that we can look at things like services and innovation, and less of it in hardware? And OCP, I believe, is a perfect solution for us in that regard. 
So we are committed uh, to OCP. There's a number of diverse use cases that we've uh, kicked off. We've definitely kicked off the data center one. Uh, next year, we want to look at facilities. So we do have a rack server storage and networking in our current project that we're looking to launch it, mainly uh, beginning with some of the big data use cases and data science uh, entirely. Then really looking at the tools around it and bringing our DevSecOps program also into the space. The target that my team and I are looking at is really to have 80% uh, open hardware and software adoption by 2025. And this means that in many ways, whether we're running on a public cloud or a private cloud, especially for our private cloud proposition, that all of that is running on OCP. We see the opportunity in terms of energy savings, and we say this is where we want our new data centers to play in. A number of big groups are of interest to us. So I talked about the facilities, uh, networking, definitely being a telco, it's good to hear uh, some of the examples and some of our partners on stage talking about what they've been able to do. Uh, networking becomes critical. The telco side, open RAN, looking at security as well as server and storage. And we're looking to work together uh, with our partner Atlantis to go beyond and take OCP uh, solutions jointly to the market. We have a lot of the financial institutions in our country and big businesses and government who are looking at our project quite cleanly. And some of them said, George, are you sure you're going to do this? If you do it, we're going to do this. So I'm quite excited about what this opportunity brings. I'm excited that uh, for the first time on our continent that we're going to have a large scale deployment on OCP. And maybe as the examples are given about the regions uh, that have full data centers that are OCP, I want to trust that we'll be talking about doing it also in Nairobi, Kenya, as part of being innovative, as part of having value, and also about transforming lives. So as I close, I know Africa has been known for many things. Some of you may say poverty. Some of you may say war. Some of you may also not know that we have the most minerals in the world. But I make a proposition that Africa is the hotbed of innovation. And we have unique challenges, but I also believe there are unique opportunities for the community. And I encourage the community to engage with those in other regions, to be able to learn and also to share, and so ensure that there's a broad perspective as we look at new designs and new projects. I also believe that if we come together and work together, we'll not only be able to transform lives through open possibilities, but also we'll be able to build a sustainable future for Africa. Thank you so much, and it's great being here.